Newfoundland, a rugged and yet stunningly beautiful island in the North Atlantic. From rarely seen wildlife such as caribou and moose, to incredible runs of Atlantic salmon. Newfoundland has been captivating visitors for hundreds of years with its natural wonders. My adventure is in northern Newfoundland, which juts into the sea, surrounded by passing icebergs, feeding whales, and much, much more. I'm the guest of Tuckamore Lodge, considered by many as one of the top destinations in Newfoundland to visit. Best of all, the salmon are running in very large numbers this year. This should be a trip I will remember for the rest of my life. Come join me on this epic adventure. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. This week, I get to return to one of my favorite fly fishing destinations, Newfoundland. With outstanding fishing, incredible wildlife sightings, beautiful landscape, plus warm, wonderful people. I'm always eager to get back to this welcoming island. On this special trip, I experience all the excitement Newfoundland has to offer while visiting Tuckamore Lodge. This first class luxury lodge is nestled on the scenic coast of the Great Northern Peninsula, a prime location for sightseeing, taking in the boundless wildlife and of course, spending time on the water, casting for Atlantic salmon on the fly. The perfect holiday for any angler. As any angler knows all too well, mother nature can be fickle and really alter your plans. Just as I arrived at Tuckamore Lodge, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans restricted fishing on the rivers due to low water levels, meaning we could only fish between first light, which was 4.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. each day. This measure was implemented to protect the salmon as low water conditions often equates to rising temperatures, stressing the fish. The good news was that water temperatures were actually dropping thanks to cool nights and overcast days. Despite these restrictions, I was still excited as there's so much to do in this region besides fishing. My guide this week is Stephen Flynn, who everyone knows as Junior. He's been fishing in this area of Newfoundland his whole life 
and possesses in-depth knowledge and understanding of the techniques and patterns that will ensure success. With much anticipation, I was eager to rise before sunup each day and get out on the water. Thank goodness for strong coffee. So Junior, why did we, uh, why have you brought me to this particular spot? Um, what do you want me to use? And what can we expect from this spot? Because I'm seeing lots of fish, so it's a good sign. Well, right here now, the fish is the narrow, the river narrows up here really. And there's a deep channel through, they hold right here in this, this deep, deep channel, right? So where it comes through out here. So you start up here on the top and we'll do a bit of dry fly fishing and drop it in, let it did drift down between the, the stones here. These fish are hold here. This is the deepest part of the river, right? And, and there's lots of them there now, get a look at it. So get out and have a go. There, Ooh. Got, got him? Yes. Yep. Good. That was interesting eat. Yep. We've got fish jumping everywhere here, Junior. And I could not get them to eat. It's a little bummer. And I think this is a fresher fish though. Yeah. It yeah. looks like a fresher girl. So, bring you want me to bring them over here? Yeah, try to bring them around and, and bring them into the little bay there. That's, That's a fresh, fresh fish. fish. Yeah. yeah. Nice silvery fish. Nice jumps. Beautiful. Perfect on a seven or eight weight rod. Oh, he's getting around that rock. Bring him over here. There we go. We're gonna bring him to you. Fish is ready. His head's up. Bring it in. There we go. First fish that we got here. We had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Came in here, be here for first light. Okay, there we go, that fish. Right, I'm gonna show the camera, just quick. Beautiful. And he's already ready to go. Beautiful girl. Fresh. I'll bring him out. Just like that. And you're out there, we'll go right out in front of you, so right that way. And cast towards that big stone on that point right there. Look. Over there? Yeah. Cast towards that and let it rip, okay. ripple across there. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. That was like coordinated uh, synchronized swimming. Synchronized swimming, boy. Though we saw many salmon moving up the river, I could only entice one to take my topwater fly. No problem. Tomorrow, I'll get another chance. After a wonderful brunch and much needed nap, I was ready to explore more of this beautiful area. There's so much to do within a one to two hour drive of the lodge. Perfect for families, couples, or even angling friends, there's something here for everyone. Before leaving, I spoke to lodge owner Barb Ginge about the many options available. What can people expect? Well, you know, a lot of people come here to do fishing, and all of a sudden they realize, well, you can see icebergs. Well, there's not too many places in the world that you can see icebergs. So they say, well, can we take a morning off or afternoon off and go see icebergs? Well. Yeah, if that's, the, if that's what they want to do, well, we try to accommodate their wishes, okay? So we take them to see the icebergs, and at the same time, they probably go see Vikings. And we have ecological reserves here. Some people are into that, and they want to see those places because they're special. And, you know, we have the Viking site, the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and on this peninsula, we have two, and have one next door to us. That's, you know, that's really important. So a lot of people, that's important to them, too, because they uh, support conservation, they support heritage and culture and being here and you know everybody when they plan a trip think you only come one time if you really enjoy it then you come back okay if you don't do it this time then you do it next time because you got an idea what we have for my afternoon exploring 
I decided to visit the small town of St. Anthony's and its famous Fishing Point Municipal Park. Incredible views of the Atlantic Ocean, seabirds, and possibly passing whales. It also has lots of nice trails to take a stroll on and maybe meet a new friend like this young fox. On our way back to the lodge, we slowed down to watch some young foxes by the road. Then we spotted a large moose that was casual eating a late day dinner. All part of the natural wonders you see when in this part of Newfoundland. After dinner, I went to bed almost immediately since we had an early morning coming. Day two, and Junior has taken me to another river to try our luck. It's a beautiful morning with the mist coming up from the river and the sun is trying to peek through. As I looked both up and down the river, there were fresh salmon jumping and running upstream. Now the question is, can I catch one? Colin was out here this morning. There's a stone right about halfway in the center of the pool here. And the fish usually lay right on both sides and just behind the stone and, and again, some in the front. So if you can try them with a dry fly, it's really slow, flat water here. Nice little bug letting it drift by the stone, hoping we're gonna get some action here. Well, Junior and I have had a great morning here. We've been, uh, came out here at first light. There's so many fish here, it's crazy. I've hooked fish every day, but today I only had two fish come up. I could not get a fish to eat, and there are so many fish jumping and rising and doing everything here, but they wouldn't eat. That's salmon fishing. You can't get them every time, and even though the conditions are perfect, we got low light, overcast, flat calm, lots of fish, doesn't mean you're gonna get them, especially in salmon fishing. We go back to the lodge, have a nice brunch, and then go out and have some fun this afternoon. Listen, this is a good place to bring people though, easy access, pretty, calm. For our afternoon adventure, Barb set us up with Justin Boyd, one of the lodge's best deep sea fishing and coastal sightseeing guides. So it usually takes about two, two, two and a half, three hours just to do the trip around the island and then go over towards Brent's Island and come back in the main run there. And then as you, as you add in more stuff, you do the the birds and the fishing, well, the time gets longer. Then you get into half day trips and, and day trips and stuff like that with the shore lunches and stuff. I just usually the puffin tour is between two and three hours and you still get to, if the iceberg isn't that there, I'm not gonna say, well, you can't go see the iceberg. You know, I'm gonna take you over around the iceberg. You want a bit of ice, you get a bit of ice. Just to get to see the, the people out in boat around here. It makes, it makes a bit interesting to go around and see the local people. And any given day, it could be anything at all to cross your path. Justin brought his son, Casey, along for our deep sea fishing adventure and to hopefully help us spot whales and icebergs. Casey's excitement was contagious. It was obvious this is a future hardcore angler. I didn't take too long. Should I get a rod too there and start fishing with you? Yes, sir. You can grab one. I'll try and hook for a little tiny one, yep. Yeah. There you go. 
There, we get First card of the day. Yes, First card of the day. Wee-hee! Hey, you should get fish here. You should get some fish. Oh. You got good fish or you got bottom? You got a fish. You got a fish fish. Oh, God! Now, Casey. There's no. nothing wrong with that one. Nope. Good one. Keep him hold. Keep him hold. Don't reel on. He's trying to fight you. That's a good fish. Take your time. He's a good one. He's a good one. When they fight like that, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with he, buddy. That's a nice good catch. Oh, Casey. No, nope, they're not do that. Oh, get that away from my neck, please. What do you got there? Ooh. That's a keeper. That's another keeper. Though we could not find either whales or icebergs this day, besides fun fishing, we did get a wonderful boat tour of one of the historic fishing villages in the region, complete with wild caribou. What a treat to complement the cod fishing. You know, you can have just a fishing experience, okay, adventure but you can have a combination. And the combination is you can do lots of other things. Like while you're fishing, as a, as a fishing person, it can be male or female, uh, they can go in the morning, enjoy the morning. They love being on the river when it's quiet <clears throat> and it's nice, it's not too hot. And you know, the fish are performing and you can do your thing, right? You can come in then and have a lunch with your family and then you can leave and you can go to like see the Viking site, or someday in the morning you might want to go on a boat tour. You can do it in here, Bay here, and or you can do it on a, a professional boat tour that takes a lot of people. You can have private or crowds, okay? Your choice. And you know, when you go on those boat tours, you can see icebergs. If you don't see icebergs today, you can see whales probably. Then tomorrow you can go see icebergs. You can go see the seabirds. You can have a picnic where you're among the caribou and you probably see a moose or so walk down through the water as well, or in on the bogs. And there's tons of things to be done. Day three of my fishing trip starts at 4 a.m. with a cup of coffee, a short boat ride, and then we walk down to the river. It's cool, overcast, and overnight rains have helped raise the water levels. Ideal conditions for the salmon. But unfortunately, it is also windy and a bit rainy. Will the salmon see my fly? So here we are. Gross, rainy, easterly wind day. And if there's one thing I can tell you about salmon fishing, is every time you have a rule, the rule gets broken. Everyone tells me that salmon don't eat on an easterly wind generally. Yesterday we had perfect conditions, couldn't get a fish. Flat calm. And look at this, wind coming right in our face. This is the third rise I've had to a fly. And I've only been here 15 minutes. So, lesson to be learned is that salmon write the rules. <laughs> we'll take them, that's right, Junior. That was such a subtle take. Oh, he just popped. So it didn't break him off. One of the things you'll get with these very, very small flies is that they'll uh, pop, pop out to get the right angle. But that little bee is doing the work. Very subtle take, just sucked it under, not usual grab, but it's gross, Junior. But we're, I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm glad you insisted on taking me out because I'm having fun. fast. I kept working another fish over here and I thought okay I'm gonna give it a little rest and I'm gonna go up above and persistence paid off and got an eat right away real quick. He is. We got another eat on a lousy blustery easterly wind day when everything's going against us. This guy, it's almost like he doesn't know he's hooked. 
I'm going to bring him over here to Junior. There he goes, right in the corner of the mouse. Perfect. Whew. It is gross out, but I'm having so much fun. And this is another reason why you bring the proper clothes to wear. You got a good fleece on, I'm layered, good uh, what, uh, wading jacket, and of course waders. Flies out, thank you, sir. Lucky for us, the bad weather didn't last long. Before we knew it, the skies cleared up and the sun made its way out for the rest of our time on the water. With more light, we were able to see just how many salmon were stacked up in the river, with more coming up river every hour. It was truly an astonishing sight to see. Take. Hooked him anyway, he's on there. Yeah. Let's see what happens. You took the orange bug. And I come up here a bit towards you. Just so I can pull him in towards you. He's almost ready to come in. Oh, nice fat grills. Yeah. Fought well. Several jumps. There's a lot bigger ones there. Oh, a lot bigger. That fish is a little bit dark. He's a bit, uh, yeah, he's, he's been here for a bit. Oh, hey, let you know. When he lets me know, he's gone. So one of the things that Junior did for me is he changed uh, my fly and we we're using very, very small size, 10, 12 flies dark and he said well let's try something different dark with orange hackle doesn't have a tail on it but it's basically a bug it's not a bomber a bug. yeah and it worked really well i've raised three fish when i say raise sometimes they'll come up have a look at it sometimes it just disturbs them and they'll move away and in this case this fish came up very gently sipped it after such an incredible morning on the water it was no surprise, I was ready for a hot meal and a quick nap. After a satisfying sleep, Junior and I traveled back out on the water. This time, however, we headed out to sea. Junior wanted to show me traditional Newfoundland hand lining for cod, also known as hand jigging, a skill that Junior has spent his life mastering. It's an old fashioned cod jigger, but a one claw cod jigger is all we're allowed to use. You're the same, right? Well, this, that's a flash one. That's a Norwegian. Yeah. This is Newfoundland cod jigger I have. That just led? Yeah, just led. Put this over the side, put it on the bottom. There we go. This one's fighting well, baby. So this is how you get big forearms like Popeye, right? Yeah. Doing this for That's how days it is. and years. A little bit of spinach and do this. <laughs> this isn't as big a one. Like before. Yeah, you got me beating on that one. This guy's just a little one. They had eaten size cod. We're allowed to catch 15 cod, five each. Wow, what a fantastic day. This morning we had Atlantic salmon fishing, came back to the lodge, had some lunch. Then we came out here with Junior. He's taking us out, we did a little cod jigging, and then we went whale watching. Found one whale and a whole bunch of dolphins. I mean, this has been a fantastic day. And of course, the landscape here is second to none. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
now it's time to go in, get ready for dinner, nice night, and then tomorrow, some more salmon fish. On our way back to the lodge, Junior took us to see some underground caves that a river runs through and which is also full of migrating salmon. Unbelievable. My last day of fishing and the end to my time in Newfoundland. So sad to see the trip come to a close. Thankfully, the salmon were very cooperative on this final morning and I was destined to leave with a big smile on my face. Fish on. The dark one. Yep. Here I am. Beautiful morning. Water's up. Got mist. All right, Junior. See if I can get this guy to come in. There you go, buddy. Okay. Heads up. Nose up. And this way, I want to have a decent drag system. This isn't even a big fish. There's some big fish in here. Hopefully, we'll get some. Go. There he goes. Into the net. Maybe 10, 12 casts. I had a bunch of them come up, none of them ate, and then if I had any eat. Yep, young male, dark. Been here for a while. Uh, and there he goes. The flies we used to catch the mini salmon were a blend of local favorites and well-known patterns. Black bug with orange hackle. Undertaker. Tuckamore special. Bee bug. Whoa, great jumps. Right by that rock you told me about there, Junior. I see him when he took. All right, we ready? I think he's ready. Bring him in here. There we go, beautiful. All right, all right. Took it right in the corner of the mouth? Yep. <sighs> Black bear green butt is what works on a riffling hitch. Um, Junior told me to put on a wet fly. He said, uh, you know something? Winds come up. We were using little bugs before. They were working great, but with this wind, they couldn't see the fly. So I started riffling across and it's working well. I've had a few come up. And now, I've got two fish to the net so far. Got it? In fact, I think we're done now, aren't we? Yes. Beautiful fish. Beautiful grills. Four, four and a half pounds. Yeah. That's a darker fish. We've seen lots of light ones here. Oh, Junior. Well, they're ready to go. Thank you, sir. Well, I gotta tell you, I've had a wonderful week here at Tuckamore Lodge. Uh, the salmon fishing has been fantastic and Junior's been an outstanding guide. He's been here for over 20 years with uh, Tuckamore Lodge. There's hundreds of fish here. It's the first week of August. He tells me the fishing's good from June all the way to September, which is fantastic for anglers that are looking for something through the summer. Um, more importantly, I love all the things you can do here. I want to bring my family the next time I come and see the Viking Village, go see uh, some of the sites such as Gross Morn. I mean, there's so much to do around here. You want to learn more? Go to our website, thenewflyfisher.com, where we have information about Tuckamore Lodge. Thanks for watching 
and we'll see you on the water. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.